Hi, this is Manjula Narayan, books editor, Hindustan Times, and I'm with Ruth Padel, a uh, poet, um, you know, uh, British poet. And um, uh, is this the first time you've uh, come to the Jaipur Literature Festival? No, I've been I've been here about three times, oh. and um, when I was here two years ago, um, it was just my mother had just begun dying and then yes. stopped. So I um. She made me come. She was a very forthright lady, and I never won an argument with her. And so she made me come here, and um, I came here, and I researched emeralds, and I went back. And she died very peacefully, and um, I, I somehow connect the Jaipur festival and the kindness of people here with that blessing of a gentle death. Um, and I love the Jaipur festival because everybody loves books and is so hungry to learn. Really, I thought you know. I mean, yes, of course, a lot of people come here because they they love books. But there are also people who just come out, come here to hang around. But that's part of the scene, and you know, yes. so that's fine. And I, I heard the you know the 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 speech you gave before the keynote address, and the and the poems you read out, and they were lovely. <laughs> And um, uh, and speaking about losing your mother, and you know. Uh, but, uh, you you're also involved in a lot of uh, uh, charities and uh, right conservation, conservation chari charities. Yes. So talk about how you know your poetry and the natural world, you know, and and the linkage is there because I'm sure there are. Yes. So so um, I wrote a book about um, tigers, wild tigers. And um, I didn't mean to write it. <laughs> I, I sort of fell into it. And the first time I went into a tiger forest was in Panna. And there were tigers there then. They were afterwards poached. I think they've come back now there. And I felt so at home. And I felt going into a tiger forest is like going into a poem. You may not see the whole meaning. You may never see the tiger, but it's there. There is a meaning in the poem. There is a tiger in the forest. And every leaf, everything that you see, whether the tiniest squirrel or an otter or whatever, is connected to it in some way or other. And somehow, I suppose perhaps because of my heritage of being Darwin's great-great-granddaughter, but I, I, I think that's more it's not to do with genes, it's to do with the books I read and how I grew up, that I feel that the natural world is part of the meaning of life. Um, and so um, writing is part of making sense of the world, writing to explore the world, writing to understand, and then to offer your understanding to other people. And that's why I like Jaipur so much, because people are, are sharing understanding. Okay, and you were mentioning an award, the, the Kanaya Lal Award, I think. So yes. talk about that. Okay, so this is the Mahakavi Kamala Yal Award from the foundation. And, um, sorry, excuse me, I've got hay fever. Um, it's a foundation which is reinstating an award for a great Rajasthani poet. So what's so important about this award is that it is reinstated for a great Rajasthani poem. Hundreds of crore of people know his name. And um, it is given for all India. And I've always felt, ever since I've been coming to India, and you know, I see other poets, whether it's in Chennai or whether it's in Kolkata or, or Trivandrum, and I feel they have their own languages, they have their own... Um, traditions, how hard it is for poets who always want to talk to each other um, because they, they have these different languages and they can't always understand each other. So I think in this award, I think one must really, really congratulate the judges who have worked very hard through translators to read poems in Tamil or poems in Malayalam or Kannada. And, um, and it's marvelous that a poem, a a, a prize from Rajasthan has gone to a Tamil poet from the south, and that's a natural thing. Everybody wants to enjoy people's stories, people's emotions. She said Samla, the one lady who's won it, she's written novels and poems. She was locked up for, for eight years. She was in a book, and she gradually um, she met poems in Tamil and then in other languages, and she wrote her own poems, she said, in order to connect with other people, to express her emotions or to give her emotions to other people. And I think that's fantastic that poetry can do that. Well, you know, the, the magic of poetry is kind of, that's what it is. I mean, you, it helps you transcend in, in some way, right? So, um, uh, also, you know, talk about your work with refugees and... Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so, yes, um, I am... Um, 
I've lived a lot in Greece. I did ancient studies in ancient Greek at Oxford, and then when I went to modern Greece, I was I was sort of more or less thrown into an archaeological trench by the archaeologists and said, "Help us!" And I was fascinated by the layers going down, and um, of history and of people at different times. And so I've always been connected with Greece. And then when the Syrian crisis came and there were all those refugees coming out of Syria and going to Lesbos, one small island in the North Aegean. And, you know, the poor people, Greece is having a recession. You know, people, the, the people living in Lesbos can't afford coffee in their own cafes. Um, and suddenly they're getting thousands and thousands of people and they were so hospitable to them. And I felt this, po this small island is really on the forefront of a problem of uh, the whole world. How are we going to look after the people who are being, have to leave their home? I wrote a book called The Mara Crossing, which is about all animals, all forms of life migrating away from where they where it becomes impossible to live to find another better home and a better future somewhere else and that's what all animals do and birds do birds migration weaves the world together and um i just thought i have to go there and, and see and see how the lesbos villages are helping with it and how and so i went there i went and, and worked in camps i worked in camps also in mainland greece and um, um so i started working with a syrian artist to make um, installations about this really this joining of sharing of, of land okay. so from your work in all this one can see that you believe in the idea that you know uh, that that an that a poet or uh, um, and an artist and you know a creative person should be you know should should have some I mean you know, should create some meaning by being part of you know, the struggles of the world as opposed to, you know, the general idea that, you know, poets should just be, I don't know, you know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I don't, nobody wants to be, uh. <laughs> No, a poet should be part of the world, a poet is part of the world, and um, shouldn't just sort of sit back on the clouds and pronounce upon it. Um, we, we, um, we have to connect. Poetry is about connection. And, um, you know, you have to go out to life and see what you can find in life and then offer it to other people as far as I'm concerned that's and then you make yeah. something it isn't that you have a message you make something out of your being to offer it to another person and the making is as important as the offering hmm. okay so what do you think uh, I mean we have poetry in so many I mean we have so many different languages and we have like a rich tradition in poetry in all of them I mean you know but we also have a you know we we also have a rich tradition in Indian English poetry. So talk about what you, you know, how you react to that. Well, I, I love it, but I love learning um, and hearing poetry in all languages. Um, it's interesting, when I, was, when I was doing my tiger book, I was in the um, Bay of Bengal on the Indian side of the Sundarbans, and um, we were on a boat. And it was, we were suddenly being passed. We had to stop and wait for the rubbish boat to pass because they have to collect the rubbish. And it was a terrible smell. And, but it was very beautiful. There was the moon coming up there and the sun going down there. And in order to keep the smell out of my nostrils, I started to sing a song, a Scottish song. And the Bengali guy who was taking me around said, that's Tagore. <laughs> and um, a Tagore had apparently set some of his lovely poems to Scottish melodies. And so he and I sang this, Thing, and he sang the Tagore's words and I sang the Scottish words together. Um, and I thought how wonderful it is. I mean, Tagore is an extraordinary joining moment and a joining genius of amalgam, a fusion. We now call it fusion. Um, so, I mean, I love Tagore, but I also love, you know, Rumi, when translated. Um, I think, you know, poets can transcend languages. Some people have said that translation is like it's like, you know, you have a beautiful embroidery on the top and you turn it over and underneath there are all the colours all muddled up and, and they're not really structured. But I don't think that's true. A, a really good translator um, can create something beautiful which, um, which can inspire us too. Yeah. Okay, I think that should be it. Thank, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Very well.